Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. So I've got a bit of a stack of palettes and wanted to use one up on a project. So first, it's breaking it up time. Using this pry bar is definitely my favorite method as I think it's the quickest way to get the slats removed. When I've got enough bits, it's time to take it all into the workshop and start the tedious job of getting it all denailed. This is going to be a rustic project and it's not going to get run through the planer. So if there's any little nails left over, it's not too important. So I always enjoy seeing a bit of wildlife in the garden. And this is going to be a bug house or a bug hotel. There's lots of different names for them. Anyway, it's something to attract some wildlife. As I say, I'm not going to put it through the planar thicknesser, but I do want everything to be the same width. So I'm just going to put a straight edge on one side using a hand plane. Then when that's done, I can take it over to the table saw, set the fence up and just rip a small bit off the other side. So I've got two parallel edges. I want my bug house to have a pitched roof. So I get the mitre gauge set to 45 degrees. I can then get two cuts made so I've got a nice point in the middle of my roof. Then I can tilt the blade over to 45 degrees and now I can cut the sides for the bug house. Now you can see how all those angled cuts are all going to line up together. This needs some dividers or probably should call them floors and I can get them cut on the crosscut sled. Now I'm going to get this put together with nothing fancy, just some PVA wood glue that's rated for outside, and then I'm going to get it all nailed together. Now I've got some galvanized ring shank nails left over from a shepherd's hut build many years ago, so I'm going to use those. For the roof, I just want a couple of bits buck jointed at the top, but I want the angle at the bottom to be at 45 degrees to match the roof. So I just get them cut down on the table saw and then again, they can just get glued and nailed into place. So I wanted to get some kind of tiling on the roof to offer a bit of protection, but also just because it'll look nicer. And I had a look for my piles and I found some aluminium. So I'm going to get this cut down with some snips and I'm going to have it so I can overhang it at the back and the front and bend it over and underneath. So let's get that done. I just use a sharpie to get it marked out and then it cuts pretty easily with some tin snips. I work out where I want the bend at the top of the roof to go, mark that out, and then I'm going to use the vise to make the bend. So I just drop it in down to my line, clamp it up, fold it over, and just press it down with the hammer. I just need to snip in a little bird's mouth on both sides of this so that the bits are going to join up nicely. Now I can just fold over the sides and I use the other vise for this. With all the bends made, it's a pretty good fit. So to attach this, I've just got some little galvanized roofing felt nails. I didn't drill holes in the aluminium, just hitting them pierced it fine. So now I've got all these cubbies made, I need to fill them up. Now there's lots of good nature websites that tell you what to fill them up with. And I've had a look and I've been out foraging. And I'll go through what I've got in a second, but they all have different purposes. So I recommend you go and look at some of these websites, just search making a bug house or a bug hotel and any of the big nature charities have pages on it. So I'll go through what I've got. 
Now the one bit I didn't go out foraging for was the bamboo canes. I had to buy those. But I had some sticks from the garden. These are some dried stems which are hollow. Some pine cones and I'm going to use those shavings from earlier. So I need everything to be the same length to fit into these little cubbies or floors. So I measure it, set the fence on the bandsaw and start cutting all the pieces. So I have all the bits cut to length and the idea is they've got nice holes in like the bamboo and these hollow stems. Obviously the bits of wood don't so I'm going to have to add some holes with the drill. I used a couple of different drill bits so the idea is between the bamboo, the stems and these ones you should have a good selection of different size holes. Now I can start filling it up. So I start with all the bits that I cut to length. So sticks in the bottom, then the reeds, then the bamboo. Now I want everything nice and tight so that nothing falls out. So I really wedged everything in. The pine cones went in next, and then the last thing was those wood shavings. So these bits are all wedged in nicely, but the cones and the shavings could obviously fall out. So what I've got is some wire mesh, which hopefully is the right gauge to let bugs in, but not let these bits fall out. And to hold that in place, I've got some staples that are rated for going outside, so they won't rust. I just hold the mesh up to it and draw out with a Sharpie to get the right size. And then I can use the tin snips again to get it cut out. Now I just get a few of these staples in to hold it all in place. The last job, I just put a couple of these brass keyhole mirror plates on the back so I can attach it to a wall. And that's it all done. Now I've made mine long and thin because I think it fit on a fence post nicely. But you can make one any shape you want using any materials you can find. As I say, I'm going to put it on a fence post, but just for the sake of a thumbnail, I'm going to put it on the workshop. So, thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos.